Welcome back to Community Bible Church's Kids Class. Thank you to the Bill Rice Ranch and everyone that helped bring us this story. And now for this week's thrilling Western story. I met the silver outlaw one day when I was riding back near the Buck Creek pasture, a pasture of some thousand of 7,000 acres. I was 18 years old that summer and lived on the Graham Ranch where my widowed sister, Ruth, was teaching school. My parents were dead. All my life, I had wanted a beautiful white or silver horse like the one Sir Galahad, George Washington, the Lone Ranger, and other heroic men had ridden. But when I finally found such a horse, I wasn't even looking for her. It just happened, and she turned out to be an outlaw. The deadliest, most hate-filled horse I had ever known. I was riding through the brush when I came to a small hill and rode old Galahad, a large paint cow pony, cow pony on the top. On the summit, I enjoyed a much better view of the pasture and saw a band of about 20 horses and mules a mile away. In the group, there was a horse with a shining silver coat, and I was immediately interested. I rode Goodfellow down the hill, and we made our way through the brush to the little herd we had spotted. When I got one, there, I got one quick, good look at the silver horse before I was spotted and the entire group disappeared into the brush. But I did get one good look, a look at the most beautiful horse I had ever seen. I rode back to the main ranch house in, the state, in a state of excitement. Pa, I said to Mr. Graham, I have just seen the most beautiful silver horse in the state of Texas. Who does she belong to? Where was she? A, with a bunch of horses and mules back by the Bear Creek. Oh, she belongs to the ranch. How old is she? I asked. Seven. Is she broken? I wanted to know. Nope, he replied. Seems like no one ever got around to breaking her when she was young, and now she's almost too old. Could I break her and have her for my horse? I wanted to know. Think you can ride her, Bill? Pa asked with a half smile. I can ride anything on this ranch, I boasted. I sure would like to try. All right, Mr. Graham said, and he was grinning. If you can catch her and ride her, you can have her as your horse. Does she have a name? I asked. Oh, Pa drawled. drawled. She has a couple. Some folks call her a gray devil, and several fellers who and several fellas who tried to ride her call her Go West. Go West, I said. That's a funny name for a horse. Why did she why do they call her that? Well, it seems a newspaper man once advertised Go West, young man, go west. And every time someone tried to ride that horse, she sure does try to take him west on the double. To go west in cowboy language means to die. And I pondered this as I made plans to catch go west. I wondered if the boss was joking. I sure found out. The boss had said I could have her as my horse if I could catch her and ride her. Catch her? Great guns, she had the ears like a fox, and a nose like a coyote, and the speed of a greyhound. I couldn't slip up close enough even to shoot her, much less catch her. I just about ran the legs off every horse on that ranch, trying to catch her. Finally, I hired two cowboys to help me on a Saturday afternoon and by using relay horses, we finally tired her enough to close in on her. 
and it was and it just happened that I was the one who was lucky enough to be able to rope her. There was a small corral nearby, and I was going to try to ride her there, but both men insisted we take her to a large loading corral near the house. At the big corral, I took off my shirt, blindfolded the silver horse, and slapped a saddle on her back while the two punchers snubbed her down. I slipped a bridle with a chain curb strap on her head and was just about to mount when I heard a woman yell, Here! What are you doing? Wait a minute! It was Mrs. Graham, lovely wife of the boss, walking up to the gate. Isn't that go west? she asked. Billy, what in the world do you think you're going to do? I told her I was going to ride the silver one. No, you aren't either, she said. You unsaddle that horse right now and leave her alone. But Mrs. Graham, I protested, Pa told me, Pa told me I could have her if I could catch her and ride her. She looked surprised. I don't believe he told you anything of the kind, she said. Now, I argued, You know good and well, I wouldn't lie to you. No, you wouldn't, she agreed, but you certainly misunderstood him. I know he wouldn't let you fool with that horse if he knew it. She sent for the boss, and other folks began drifting up until we had a dozen or more spectators before Mr. Graham came. Pa took in the situation at a glance. His first question was, How in the world did you catch her? When I explained, he said, You were were supposed to catch her, but you didn't. You had help. But I did catch her, I reminded him. I was the one who roped her. And besides, you didn't say I couldn't have help. Mr. Graham laughed. The joke's on me, he said. I think... I don't think you could ever catch her, and I have sure been getting a kick out of you chasing that horse all over the ranch. But Ma is right. You mustn't try to ride her. Why can't I try to ride her? I wanted to know. Because, he said, she is an outlaw. Both her father and grandfather were wild stallions that could never be broken. Her mother was so wild and mean that she was put to death after breaking a man's back, and Go West has the mean streak in her. Several men have tried to break her, and she has hurt every one of them. I should have had her killed a long time ago, but just never did get around to it. He turned to one of the hands and said, Go get a rifle. No! I burst it out. Don't shoot her! Pa, you told me I could have her if I could catch and ride her. I caught her, and now I'm going to ride her. But son, Mr. Graham said, I just meant it as a joke. I'm sorry it backfired, but I don't want you to get hurt. Now listen, you can go to the horse pasture and pick out any horse I've got except Goodfellow, and you can have him outright. Just forget about the silver outlaw. But I was stubborn. I really don't know why, because by this time, I was scared half to death. But I still insisted on riding Go West. Finally, the boss turned to his wife and gently said, You better go to the house. I don't want you to see this. Get some water on the stove and get bandages and liniment ready. She turned away quietly, but before she had gone a dozen steps, we heard her begin to cry. While the onlookers climbed on the fence, the two cowboys again snubbed Go West, and I stepped into the saddle. I doubt if I had ever been more scared in my life. I tested the stirrups and then motioned for the men to get away as I reached to take off the blindfold. 
After what happened next, I wasn't one bit surprised when I learned about the atomic bomb. In fact, it was almost an anticlimax. As the blindfold, my shirt, floated to the ground, the horse rose in the air with a powerful lunge. Her head disappeared between her front feet, and she landed, stiff-legged, with a tremendous jar. My knees couldn't take the jolt, and I slammed into the saddle with a sickening thud. As she rose into the air again, I frantically pulled back on the reins and was horrified to feel the chain curb strap break. When she hit the ground that time, I thought for sure my belly had burst and I felt a terrible nausea as blood poured from my nose. On her third lunge, she went high into the air, sunfished, and came back down, facing another direction. And I was slammed to one side of the saddle, clawing for the horn as I lay on her neck and withers in front of the saddle. But I had lost both stirrups, was deathly sick, and was almost unconscious. With her next powerful lunge, I shot out of the saddle, sailed over her head, and made a graceful, as I was told afterwards, three-point landing on my face, chest, and tummy that blowed, that plowed up several feet of the corral floor. There was more to come. As I lay dazed and stunned, I heard the squeal of horse and the shout of warning from the corral fence. As I turned over on my back, two things happened. The silver outlaw reared above me, plainly intending to kill me with her flashing feet. At the same time, one of the men jumped from the fence and struck her with a whip, driving her away. Men helped me to my feet. My face and naked chest were scratched up right much, and I was bleeding from my nose and mouth. But it seemed like I was not seriously injured. I told you that horse could throw you, Mr. Graham said, but you think you are so smart. You never will listen to anyone. You don't have a lick of sense. I know you I knew you couldn't ride that outlaw. She threw me once, I admitted, but she can't do it again. I'm going to get back on her. No, you're not, Graham said. I'm still boss here, and you're not and you're going to and you're going to get back on that horse? Hold him, men. Two men grabbed me, and to tell the truth, I was never so easily held in my life. The silver outlaw was still rising clouds of dust in the corral, trying to buck the saddle off. It was a sad and sorry mess as I, stum as I stumbled out of the gate. Pa Graham was sympathetic. I know how you feel, boy, he said. I have an idea. Wes Harlan, champion cowboy of Texas, lives on a ranch near here, and he is home. I'm going to ask him to come and look at this horse. A while later, a Model A Ford came bouncing over the prairie with a saddle strapped to the hood. A lean, handsome young man stepped out, shook hands with Pa, and looked at the outlaw in the corral. You heard about this horse? The boss asked. Yep. You think you can ride her? Yep. Want to try? Might as well. A few minutes later, the outlaw was again caught and snubbed, her saddle my saddle replaced with a champion's, and young Harlan was ready to ride. I was up on the fence with the others this time. The blindfold, my poor shirt again, was snapped off and again Go West exploded. She reared and plunged and came down with a spine-shattering jolt. She jumped sunfished, sidewinded, and whirled. She crashed into the fence, reared, and fell backward, regaining her feet, and tried to jump the fence. And all the time, the young champion sat in his saddle as easily as I sat in this chair to type these words. With every jump, he raked his silver, her silver sides 
from withers to flanks with his spears, with his spurs. After a bit, Go West was about winded. She was covered with foam from head to toe. Throw open the gate, West yelled, and the large gate was opened wide. Out of the gate and across the prairie went Go West in a plunging lop. Several cowboys mounted and followed, and soon all were out of sight. It was perhaps twenty minutes later that they came galloping back to the big corral. The champ pulled the outlaw to a halt, stepped lightly from the saddle, and said, Bring me a good horse. A gentle horse was brought up, and he pulled his saddle off Go West's back and snapped mine on the on the and slapped it on the fresh mount. Now bring me Bill's saddle, he said. I wondered what in the world he had in mind, but I soon found out. He tossed a rope around the silver one's neck and said, All right, Bill, climb into the saddle. I hesitated. I do hope you will understand. I wasn't scared, much just cautious. Get on, he insisted. I won't let her hurt you. She has been licked and she knows it. Besides, I have my rope around her neck. I stepped into the saddle. Listen, Bill, West said. Don't you be one bit scared. I won't let this horse hurt you. If she wants to run, I'm going to let her run, but not too fast. If she wants to buck, I'm going to let her buck. But I got her under control. I'm, I'm not going to let her throw you. And he didn't either. We started out across the prairie and directly Go West began to run. But when we neared rough ground, I began to get uneasy. West tightened up on the rope and pulled her in. A bit later, her head disappeared between her front feet and she began to buck. But West tightened the rope again and wouldn't let her buck enough to throw me. We rode all afternoon, and when we finally returned to the big corral, the silver outlaw wasn't the outlaw anymore. She was so she was one tired, stubborn, subdued horse. The very next morning, before daylight, I saddled her and began the two-day ride of over 100 miles to Decatur Baptist College. Go West never bucked me, bucked with me again. The silver outlaw had been conquered by the champion, and because of him, she never threw me again. Through those good years, I have remembered that day, that wonderful day the silver outlaw was ridden, again and again with genuine delight. How thankful I was to have a champion take my part and do for me something I could not do for myself. And through those good years, I have come to realize more and more how much I owe to another champion, another and greater overcomer. I refer to the Lord Jesus Christ. We were badly mauled by sin and faced death and hell. But Jesus overcame sin and death, and as Christians, we can confidently say, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God, which giveth us, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty five and 57 Salvation from sin is not the only victory we need to win, for it is not the only battle we face. Every Christian lives in a world that hates Jesus. We are constantly surrounded by temptation. Worldly, de worldly desires lay in wait to ambush us from every side. How good it is to know that Jesus was tempted too, but he overcame temptation. Jesus was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15b Through him we too may conquer. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, 
God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with us, but, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. How wonderful to know, as we go through life, that Jesus has gone this way before us. He knows so well the struggles that we must face, and we have his word of honor. In the world ye shall have temptation, you ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. First John sixteen thirty three. <clears throat> the world like the silver outlaw may be hatefully dangerous, but a cri- dangerous for a Christian. It may try to kill and destroy. It may desperately hurt at times until we almost dis- despair. But Jesus is a champion who has conquered the world and has promised that we will be more than conquerors through him. So although the world may run with us, it cannot take us away from the rope of God's protection, protecting care. It may buck with us but cannot destroy us. For who, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 1 John 5, 4 Thank you to all the talented writers, writers and artists that gave us this story. Please come back next week for our last thrilling Western story.